morning, everyone. This is Gail Dudley with Ministry in Motion, bringing you today's devotional. Today is Sunday, November the 8th, 2020. We're going to continue to go deep in the book, Who Told You That? The Truth About the Lies. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right. So today we're going to be talking about it's made up. It's made up. And if you have your books, your book is on page 25. If you are in your Bible study, your workbook, or the PDF that I sent you, if you did request a PDF and paid for the PDF, it is on page 25 in that as well. So it's made up. All right, for those of you who do not have the book, this is under the section called FOSS, under the section called FOSS. So let me read for you this out of the book. Nehemiah was a man who knew the truth and could not be shaken, no matter who tried to deter him from doing what he knew uh, was right and true. He stayed true to what God had called him to do and to say. He responded to Sambalot and his messengers with the same message, regardless of how they tried to deceive him. So let's look at Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. So if you have your Bibles, hopefully you do. If not, just listen to these words. And this is out of the New International Version. Verse 1 in chapter 6. When word came to Sambalot, Tobiah, Gresham, the Arab, and the rest of your enemies, that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time, I had not set the doors in the gate. Sambalot and Gresham sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message and each time I gave them the same answer. Each time I gave them the same answer. Let's stop right there and let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bestowing upon us wisdom and understanding, for giving us the words to speak and to be slow in speaking them as we wait on you to release whatever word we need to release. God, speak to our heart, speak to our spirit, give us your word Yes, God, speak clearly to us this day. God, so often we run with what we are thinking without waiting on you to release us. So God, guide our thoughts, guide our speaking this day and throughout this week. It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. I want to break this down for all of us. I told y'all we were going to go deep. We were going to slow walk this. I thought we were going to be able to do two uh, chapters at a time. Not sure that's going to work, but we'll see how far we can go. Okay. So again, that ending of that verse four, it says, and each time I gave them the same answer. And this is Nehemiah speaking. So let's start there. In our walk, we need to learn how to not allow other people to egg us on to speak before it's time or to adjust what we have to say to please anybody. If God has spoken to you, if God has spoken to us, whether it's individually or collectively, we need to learn to deliver the same words each time. Not add things to it, not to adjust it for, 
fear of what somebody's going to say. Not to sit across from somebody and watch their body language. And because we may not feel comfortable with how they're responding, that we adjust our words to, to please them or to make them feel good. Hopefully, I'm not stepping on many toes this morning, but I want to really stay there for a moment. Or when we're on the phone and there's silence, so instead of allowing for that silence, we continue to speak. We need to really hear the voice of God and answer what it is he's giving us to answer and not start feeling uncomfortable or feeling uneasy or start doubting or questioning the words that God has spoken that we change those words. No, we need to stand on what God has spoken into our spirits. We need to stand on the truth. In the case of Nehemiah, he said, I'm, I'm not about to come down from here. I know you're telling me that the wall is built and there's not a gap left in it, yet I haven't set the doors. I haven't set the gates. So what you're saying is not true. And he had a decision to make. Am I going to sit here and explain that to them? Or am I going to just continue to do the work that God has called me to do without giving them a response? And when I give them the response, I'm going to give them the exact same thing that I said to them before. As, as uh, believers of God, we literally need to begin walking in that boldness and in that confidence of the words that God has given us to speak. We know what's true. We know what's true. And where we fall short is that at times we begin to argue with people and we begin to try to get them to see our way and to get them to do what we know God has spoken to us when they can't hear, when they can't hear. Let's go back to Pharaoh for a moment. Let's go back to Pharaoh. How many times did God harden Pharaoh's heart? He just kept hardening his heart, kept hardening his heart. So no matter what anybody was saying to Pharaoh or what anybody was showing Pharaoh, he couldn't see it, he couldn't hear it because God had hardened his heart. I want you to think about that for a moment. There's so much going on in our world today. There's such a great divide. There's so much unrest. And there's this side trying to tell that side and that side's not listening or this side isn't listening. Whichever side you're on, people can't hear. And you're wondering, what are they seeing? Or what are they hearing? Or why can't they see what I see? Or why can't they hear what I am saying and what I am hearing? Maybe God has hardened one of the side's heart. And yet we want to continue to argue. We want to continue to make our voice heard. And God is saying to us, why are you doing that? They can't hear you anyway. They can't see anyway. Just hold on to what I have given you in this season and do what I have called you to do in this season. And if you give any response, make sure you're giving the same exact response over and over and over again. See, we get into trouble when we begin to alter our response. Sometimes no response is needed. Not even an acknowledgement that you've heard. And for some people, that's hard to do because we've been taught you got to be polite. You have to be courteous. Well, what exactly does that mean in the first place? A response is not always needed. And I want you to simmer in that for a moment. That's not being rude. That's not ignoring. That's just basically saying God didn't give me anything to say back right now. So I'm going to just be still and know that God is God. Let's keep looking at this. I go on to say on page 26, when we read in verse four that Nehemiah said four times, they sent the same message, message and each time I gave them the same answer. Notice they sent the same message and he sent back the same answer. He would not waver. No one could get him off course, no one. 
because he was doing what he knew that God called him to do. So here's a question. Are there times that we get off course because we're doing something that God never called us to do in the first place? Yeah, I'm going to keep putting questions out here for you that you have to wrestle through. That you have to wait on God to answer. That you truly have to exercise wisdom to respond. Could it be that we're easily distracted at times because God never called, to, called, called us to that in the first place? There's a thought. That's possible. Yeah, that's possible. So I go on to say, how often do people create chaos out of nothing? How often do people create gossip and cause more damage than not? Don't believe me. How many times have someone started their conversation with, I heard? And in the book, I give some examples. I heard that you were involved with. I heard that you were taking his position at your company and that he was fired because of. I heard you were quitting your job. Are you sure you should be purchasing that home? I hear your company might be downsizing. I saw your son, your daughter the other day. Shouldn't they be in school? I heard you and your ex are getting back together. I heard that he, I heard that she, I heard, I heard, I heard. See, the moment we hear those words, we get sucked, many of us get sucked in. We get sucked in and God is like, why are you even entertaining that? That's too much energy and that's taking you away from the assignment that I called you to in this season. See, Nehemiah, no matter how many times they came with this message, Nehemiah sent the same reply back. He didn't get off course. I can I can envision Nehemiah right now on the wall, hammering away. He up on a ladder, they're down at the ground and they're yelling up to him. Hey, Nehemiah, Sambalot sent me here to say, you know, come down and let's have a conversation. I can see Nehemiah continuing to hammer in that nail, in that wall or plastering or doing, putting concrete or whatever it is, the sand, waiting for it to get hard, the mud, waiting for it to get hard. He's not even looking down. He's not even looking back at the messenger. He's saying, no, mm -mm, here's the reply, the same reply, not even being phased by it. Can we say the same or do our, our feathers get rest, rustled, uh, 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 flustered? Um, that, you know, we get into like, oh my gosh, no, that didn't happen. No, I didn't say, no, that's not what's going on. Why even bother? Just go, mm, okay, same message. If it even deserves a response. You know, let's go back. Let's go back to the woman. At that point, her name wasn't Eve. Let's go back to the woman. Here's the serpent. We talked about this last week. The serpent coming. Did God really say? And she starts explaining. She didn't need to explain to him. She didn't, she didn't owe him not one word. She didn't owe him anything. But there's something that happens on the inside of us to get us to start thinking, well, yeah, let me, should I answer that? How many marriages have been destroyed because someone keeps sending word to either the husband or the wife saying, hey, I hear, hey, I saw your wife eating lunch with so-and-so, or hey, I saw your husband eating lunch with so-and-so. Hey, they look kind of cozy. Hey, they were laughing. Well, maybe there was a joke shared at the table and it was funny. Were they really cozy or were they having a conversation? Maybe they were planning the spouse's birthday, surprise birthday party. Maybe they were having a conversation that God needed them to have. Maybe the spouse already knew they were about to have lunch in the first place. Isn't it interesting how we get so e so caught up in something that's being said that's not even true? We're allowing the enemy to whisper something into our ears and what comes back is, who told you that? Who told you that? And here's another question. Why are they telling you that? What do they hope to gain from that? And how much energy are you giving to it in the first place? 
yeah, this is this is where I want us to walk and want us to have conversation. I am I am encouraging you to process this after this video has has ended. Not just today, not just today, but throughout the week. There's so much packed in this. It's made up. It's so much. On page 28, I go on and I'm talking about the, the woman where I said the woman initial reply was enough. However, she continued to talk. After she kept talking, the serpent replied, surely you won't die. See, what she did, when he said, did God really say, she kept talking. She said, well, well, no, not exactly. And this is the way I'm paraphrasing. No, not exactly. We can't eat, but we just can't eat of that tree. Mm -mm, you done said too much. See, that's what we do also in life. We give people too much that they're able to pull from and to continue to harass you or to get you to doubt what it is that God has called you to do. We talk too much. We say too much. I'm going to talk about garden or conversation next week. But today, what, we, we just keep talking. We just keep talking. Because the, the scripture there says, it's only the fruit, she goes, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat of it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. She gave way too much conversation to the serpent. You know, we have to ask God, um, even before we go into any conversation, with any conversation, God, guard my lips, guard my tongue. God, what should I, what should I say, God? What should I speak, God? God, speak to me. Impress upon my heart when I should be quiet. God, walk me through what I should say and what I shouldn't say. God, help me. What's, what's a part of this telephone conversation or this text message? What's a part of this, this lunch meeting, this coffee, this coffee meeting, this breakfast meeting? What is it about this in the first place? But what are we looking at, God? What do you want me to say? How do you want me to say it? On page 31, I say, notice that ne what Nehemiah did. He prayed. You can go all through this scripture, y'all. He prayed. Nehemiah 6. Let me keep going. Verse 5. Then the fifth time, Sambalot sent his aid to me with the same message. And in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written. It is reported among the nations, and Gresham says, it is true that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to these reports, you are about to become their king and have even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. Now this report will get back to the king, so come, let us confer together. Verse eight, I love it. I sent him this reply. This is Nehemiah sending the reply. Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. That's the best verse. Just when I read that, I get excited about that. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. See y'all, when you find that your back is going up against the wall, just stop and pray. You don't have to audibly pray that. You can pray it just in your spirit. God, strengthen my hands. God, strengthen my mind. God, strengthen my being. God, strengthen me. God, anoint me before I even speak another word. All of this stuff they were saying, Nehemiah is like, no, none of that is true. He sent the reply, nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. You're just making this up. See, Sambalot allowed all of these other people to give him these words, to even think that Nehemiah was about to become king and these prophets and all of this and that and the other that's going on. 
But Nehemiah was like, no, nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are literally making this up out of your head. Now, I paraphrase that, but just think about that for a moment. Think about how many times people have come to you or the enemy has lied to you. And you're sitting there going, no, none of what you are saying is happening. This is made up. This is made up, so I'm not even going to fall for it. It is made up. If you're looking at your Bible study or your workbook, the PDF that I sent you, I have up there first at the table. And I say, Nehemiah was a man who knew the truth and could not be shaken. No matter who tried to deter him from doing what he knew what was right and true, he stayed true to what God had called him to do and to say. He responded to Sambalot and his messengers with the same message, regardless of how they tried to deceive him. Then I give you the same scriptures we were talking about. Then I have on here, grow deeper. And this is what I want us to do this week. I want us to grow deeper. In Nehemiah 6, chap uh, chapter 6, verse 1, it says that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors or the gate. How often do we take hold of a lie and begin to live the lie when clearly it's a lie? That's where I want you to grow deeper this week. How often do we take hold of a lie and begin to live that lie? How many lies are you living right now? And I want you to really unpack that this week. Because sometimes we hear something so much that we take hold of that lie and we begin to live that lie. And that can become dangerous because we get to a place that we don't know, is this the truth or is this a lie? So I want you to go through there. I have another question. If the gates were missing the doors, there had to be gaps, right? Why then do we miss this truth? Not just in this story, but in our everyday life stories. If we know without a doubt, well, that's not true. Why do we even take the time to, to uh, engage in that conversation? Why do we do that? I have several questions here. Just the thought, why do we waver when we know the truth? And then I give you that inductive study again to recap the observation. What does this passage of scripture say? Interpretation, what does this passage of scripture mean? Application, how does this meaning of, of passage of scripture apply to me right now in my life circumstance? Then I give a food for thought. We read in verse four that Nehemiah said four times, they sent me the same message and each time I gave them the same reply. Break that down and talk about that. Talk about I, the word I heard. Talk about, explain, and explain why does that sometimes, why do we sometimes respond to that? Then I have steps on the journey. Nehemiah 6, 8, nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making that up out of your head. It's made up. So often in our lives, it is made up. And I'm, I'm, I'm wanting us to really consider and think about why do we fall for these things? I want you to start identifying where the enemy is moving in your life and what doors you need to shut. Go through your life and see how many doors may be open for the enemy to come in to lie. Start with your friends. How many friends are bringing things to you that are trying to distract your forward motion, distract what it is that God has called you to do? How many family members are bringing things to you? How many coworkers are bringing things to you? How much do you watch on television that has an open door to you? How many things are you tuning into and you're like, wow, that's something that's going on in my household or in my marriage. And you start thinking those things can apply to you. That's an open door that you need to close. What is it that you want to do, but you keep hearing other people or the enemy say to you, you cannot accomplish that, you cannot do that. That's an open door that needs to be closed because those things are made up. All you have to do is make the determination that this is what you want to do and you, you're going to do it. Think about God's word. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. All things. 
If he puts it in us, he will send us the resources, whatever resources those look like. I want to hear from you. I really want to hear from you. I want to know if you're working in small groups. I want to know if you're working this alone. I want to know if you need some assistance. I want to hear from you with this. Y'all, all of this is about growing. All of this is about growing. I want to hear from you. Does this teaching help? Do the questions that I ask you help? Are you thinking about some of the lies that have been told, uh, spoken into your spirit? You'll never be this. You'll never be that. That will end in a divorce. Your children, your child will never come back. You will never have the finances you need. You will never get out of debt. Those are all lies. Those are all lies. Those are all lies. We have to start taking hold of what God is speaking to us and living that into our future. Living that into our future. That means we have to hush some of that stuff that's been spoken to us and speak truth to power and speak truth to ourselves. And sometimes that's hard, especially when you've been surrounded with so much negativity and so much so much information that says of what, what you cannot do. And you may have a lack of hope you may think, well, I don't have the experience. I may not have the money to go to school. You'd be surprised how many grants are out there just waiting for you to say, hey, I'm writing this grant so I can apply for a scholarship so I can go to school. You'd be amazed of how much money is out there, even in the current economy and the current environment that can help you start a business. You'll be amazed of how many people will do one-on-one -on -one mentoring or coaching with you and will do it on a sliding scale. So what you may think will be uh, $500, maybe it's only $100. You may be telling yourself, I can't lose weight. I can't lose weight. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can lose weight. What, do you, what, is it, what is it that you need to change? What does that look like? And if you, can, if you are continuing to gain weight, what is the stress in your life that you need to change? Y'all, we're in this together. We're in this together. So, you know, we got to uncover these lies and, and hold on to the truth. So I do want to hear from you. Please send me your emails, ged at M-I-M today. And that's G as in Gail, E as in Elizabeth, D as in Dudley, at M as in Mary, I, M as in Mary, today, T-O-D-A-Y dot org. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. If you want to get the book, you can get it on Amazon. If you want to get the Bible study slash workbook, just email me. I'm doing it at a discounted rate. It's a PDF. All I'm asking you to do is please not to share it. Please don't share it. I just heard from the Holy Spirit a week and a half or so ago to say, hey, send the PDF. You just go to Kinko, Staples, um, Office Max, Office Depot, whatever it is. Do get a three ring binder because you're going to be taking notes. You're going to need a journal. I want you to set aside praying time, praying time with God, quiet time with God, meditation time with God. I want you to work through this. I want you to go through each question. Don't script, don't skip it. Take the book of Nehemiah, take chapter six and go through each scripture one by one and write your thoughts behind, beside those words, besides each scripture. Take your time through this journey. All right, let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for beginning to expose those things that have been made up in my life, that has been made up in our lives. God, expose them. We understand it may be painful at times as you begin to, ex uh, to expose those things. But God, we want to grow. We want to mature. We want to be delivered from those things. God, I'm opening up ourselves. We are opening up ourselves to you, God, to, to, to do the work you need to do on our lives. God, we surrender. We're available. Now perform the surgery that needs to be performed so that we can be better. We don't want to doubt. We want to hold on to your truth. We want your truth to overshadow and to overshine everything else that may have been spoken into our spirits. God, root it up out of us right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. 
It's in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. Have a great week. Have a great week. The link to getting the book on Amazon will be in the description, along with some other links if you're interested. But thank you for joining us. We got to continue this. All right. Until next week, I am Gail Dudley with Ministry in Motion. You have a great Sunday and you have a great week. Please work. If you don't want to work alone, get with two or three other people. Just practice social distancing. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and social distance. All right, I am Gail Dudley. You have a great week. Peace out.